All right, today is the day, and today we're going to cover the production of this mold on the door. Now, I wasn't going to do a video for every single mold on the car, but this one on the door has enough different features and things I've had to incorporate to accomplish what I need to do here. that I thought I would just go ahead and uh, record all that and create a little video so you can see how that works. Um, anyway, you see it is finished. We are ready to take a mold on the tub, which is this part here, the dashboard, across the roof and down into the sides. And creating the door is important in that because we needed this flange surface right here to mold up against. Anyway, we're going to go take a look at how that mold was made. If you remember back in an earlier video when I cut this section out, now I'm going to explain why that needs to have been done. This will have a uh, piece of squeegee trim here which will go up against the window that goes up and down. And that trim needs to fit onto a little piece that sticks up. And between that part that sticks up and the glass itself, about a quarter of an inch. So if I had used this plane, which is the plane of the window, would have hit about where this black line is. So I need to actually step out and create a little flange that sticks up for this window trim, the squeegee, to fit down over. So hence, cut this out, level this off. Now we're going to create a little parting line here for that squeegee to fit onto when it's all done. Now to get this flashing to stay in place while we get the mold built, I'm just going ahead and cut a little eighth of an inch groove to fit that little flashing into. And now I don't know why I didn't use the dust extractor to pull off all this dust and this mess I'm creating, but that would have been convenient. But cut that straight line, get ready for the flashing. Of course, now we, uh, this joker gets the dust collector out and cleans things up. But once things are ready, that flashing is just inserted in that little eighth of an inch notch. This is like a 22, 24 gauge aluminum sheet metal. I took it to the brake and put a bend in it so that it would stay straight and then glue it into that notch. Once that's done, put a release agent on. And time to start building the mold. Now I've opted to start applying this gel coats with a brush because I'm having some problems with some overspray getting into the shop here. Perfectly acceptable to apply a gel coat with a brush. Of course, if this was a heavy duty production mold, we might have taken the time to drag these kind of things into the paint booth and put it on with the sprayer, but we'll just go ahead and get that gel coat on. And once we have a, a gel coat in place, time to start adding fiberglass. Now I could have uh, gone through the whole process of how many layers and stuff, but that changes so dramatically with the type of mold you're building and how big the mold is, what kind of parts you're going to be getting out of it. So we'll suffice to say, put some bale on there, a couple layers of cloth, and then we start building up the strength with the fiberglass mat to get some thickness. And of course, once that thickness is built up, we're not going to go to an extreme on that. So we're going to use another method to for reinforcement to that door, last thing we need to do is bring some braces off of the roof down to the door so that those thin areas through here, they'll be reinforced a little bit. This here, we don't want any flexing going back and forth this way, so we're going to bring a brace. So we're going to bring a brace off the roof down to the door there. And that method of bracing is going to be with some pipes. Um, rather than drag the hydraulic bender out, this mold doesn't have to be that strong. So we're just going to use some electrical metal conduit. That way you can just use a hand bender. Um, doesn't seem like this might be strong enough to do anything. But once we have a couple of pieces of pipe, and of course the strength of the fiberglass mold itself, the two of those working in conjunction certainly make a mold that won't flex, at least enough for us to get parts out that are going to be all straight to a line. So just a matter of bending these pipes until they uh, fit the contours of the mold. And once we've got those ready to go, hold them in place. And I go ahead and attach them to the mold itself with what I call the band-aid method. 
a couple of scrap patches of cloth and mat, a little epoxy resin, bond those pipes in place, and they will be there forever. I said with a combination of the pipe and the mold, this thing will be plenty strong for what we need, and it is ready. Well, as I said, just a quick video today, but thanks for stopping by, and we will see you again.